You ugly mother f I've been dragged by John to an undisclosed location here at Putrajaya to check out the Mercedes-Benz EQV 350+, Plus, which is the fifth EV from Mercedes-Benz. Let's go check it out. One of the highlight features of the Mercedes-Benz EQV 350+, Plus is its range, which is up to 669 kilometers. Nice. That's enough for a Sunday drive to Ipoh for some nasi ganja and then back to KL and still have charge left over to get you to work the next day. Since this car was shaped by the wind, it has a drag coefficient of 0.22, which explains the range it can achieve. For comparison, the Tesla Model 3 has a drag coefficient of 0.23. The Mercedes-Benz EQE 350+, Plus has a 90.53 kilowatt hour battery pack. As for charging, as for charging, if you hook this car up to a 170 kilowatt DC charger, you can get the battery from 20%, or sorry, get the battery from 10% to 80% in a little over half an hour. As for AC charging, it supports up to 11 kilowatts, which will take approximately eight hours to get from 10% to a full charge. Powering the EQE 350 Plus is a single motor producing 288 horsepower and 565 newton meters of torque, which is enough to get this car from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in about 6.4 seconds on its way to a top speed of 210 kilometers an hour. Now, this would be the part where I talk about the exterior design. But since it doesn't exist on the EQE 350 Plus, we're just going to move on to exterior features. These are digital LED headlights with Adaptive High Beam Assist Plus, which can selectively blank out part of the light beam to avoid dazzling other drivers. The car can also detect lane markings and keep the light inside the lane. And say you're driving fast, the car can shine the light further down the road. On higher spec models, you actually get an LED light bar that runs across the front fascia. But here, you just get a plain black plastic cover that hides the sensors inside. The car rides on 19-inch, five twin-spoke light AMG alloy wheels. The car also comes with flush door handles to aid in aerodynamics, but when it goes in, it gives the side a really clean look. Don't you think? The rear taillights have this cool 3D helix design. As for boat capacity, there's only 430 liters, which is on the small side. Anyway, let's go inside and check out the interior. On the inside, you get a very minimalistic design as all the buttons, knobs and dials have been moved to this huge 12.8-inch center touchscreen which uses OLED. Oh my god! <laughs> anyway, this system runs on MBUX which, is, which stands for Mercedes-Benz UX with support for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And Unlike in most cars with a full touch control, you still get the air conditioning controls displayed at the bottom of the screen when using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Speaking about the air conditioning system, the, well, the first thing about this is that even at the lowest fan setting, it can get really loud as you guys will be able to hear in a second. But what I actually wanted to show you is that when you change the temperature, it's reflected on the 64 color ambient lighting strip on top of here. So if you, go, if you go colder, you can see the blue animation up there. And if you go warmer, you can see the red animation up there. And another cool feature is that if you turn off the sink for the left and right side, and then you change the air conditioning, only your side does the animation while the other side stays static, which is a nice attention to detail by Mercedes-Benz. There's also a fingerprint sensor to load the preference of different drivers. As you can see, John already loaded his preference. When he kidnapped me to bring me to this undisclosed location. The instrument cluster is displayed on a 12.3 inch display which you can control with the right touchpad on this Napa ladder wrapped steering wheel. The left touchpad, meanwhile, controls the infotainment system. So it's much easier to interact with the infotainment system while driving. Before we move on to the back seats, I just wanted to show you these front seats, which on a car that costs this much, really, really look basic and quite ugly. Oh, 
here at the back seats of the Mercedes-Benz EQE 350 Plus, it's actually surprisingly comfortable. Uh, yes, the, you get a lot of knee room and the floor is quite high up, closer to the base of the bench. So you do sit, sit in a squatting position. But since the bench is angled slightly, you get quite decent amount of thigh support. And uh, I'm quite tall as you can see, but I do get, you know, quite a good, good spacing for my head. And um, I think it's quite comfortable. You also get four zone climate control. So there's two zone in front and two zone at the back. So each of the passenger, rear passengers get their own climate setting, which is quite neat. And yeah, however, getting out of this car is not old people friendly. I'm a middle-aged man and I shall demonstrate to you how hard is it to get out of this car. Audio is handled by a 15-speaker, 710-watt, 3D Burmester sound system. Banging audio. As for safety, the Mercedes-Benz EQE 350 Plus comes with a comprehensive list of safety systems, which is just too long for me to memorize and list in this video. So I will get Levy to list it out somewhere around here and then you can just read it. As for pricing, the Mercedes-Benz EQE 350 Plus costs 420,000 ringgit on the road without insurance. So, would I buy this car? Well, let's just put it this way. If I had 420,000 ringgit burning a hole in my pocket, I would just let the money catch my pants on fire. Thank you so much for watching this video and coming along with me on this tour. Now, I have to find John and make him take me back to the office so I can catch you guys in the next video. Bye! Hey John, can we take the MRT back home? No! Oh.